I'm Sean Locke. Welcome to TV Heaven Telly Hell, the show that worships great telly and issues a fatwa to the rest. <laughs> My new show is going to be called Old Dog New Tricks. It's a challenge show where we give people the chance to do things they've always dreamed of. Gordon always wanted to play the piano, and after only 35 volts, he was bashing away like Jules Holland. <laughs> Mary's 84. She's just learnt Chinese. Well, I hope so. We only bought her a single ticket. <laughs> and now to reveal his personal TV heaven and telly hell, please welcome my guest, Bill Bailey! <laughs> Hello, Bill. Hello, John. Well, welcome, welcome to TV Heaven Telly. How it's a show where you talk about what you love and hate on telly. You, do you watch a lot of telly? Yes, I do. Uh, Phew, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for asking. Um, I watch anything, really. Right. Anything, anything that's on. You just really. watch anything that's on. I watch anything that's on. I've got a special one of those. You know, Video Plus. They've mm. got a special version of that, and I've set it. It only records the reveal moments of renovation shows. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just an hour of people going, oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Well, your first choice, yes. it's TV Hell, it's yeah. a celeb-based show, yeah. and uh, it's on BBC One, it's called Alistair McGowan Goes Wild with the Rhinos. That's it. What do, what do you hate about this show? Well, it's, I just feel a bit sorry for him, because he does actually look Peyton, he's terrified. I mean, somebody said to him, you go and do the thing about the rhinos, and he's got there, and he's just absolutely sort of terrified out of his wits of them, and he keeps having to kind of put a brave face on, but as Dad doesn't actually get anywhere near the rhinos. Yeah. It's kind of... We've, yeah. got, we've got a clip of him here, and we, we see him, he's terrified of a charging rhino. Yeah. Despite the fact that he is in, like, a military Land Rover. Yes. Unless one of them's got a spare set of keys, I don't know what he's worried yeah. about. But... <laughs> here we go. Someone wanted to find out exactly what I was made of. Now, this is definitely a what-if moment. What if the engine stalls? What if that huge horn tears through this metal door? What if I don't make it to the end of the first day? And what is that snorting noise? <laughs> he is, throughout this programme, just permanently shitting himself. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's an hour of a man just going... <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home! <laughs> it's not really a what-if moment, though, is it? No. Really? It's a nothing-happened moment. You know, it's yeah. a not-quite moment. Yeah. We drove off. <laughs> we drove off, and everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just about to break into an impression there, isn't he? Oh, right. He's, oh, yeah, is I, I don't know. He, he breaks into our impressions throughout it. Oh, really? He crowbars them in. Do you mean that, really? You've seen it. I mean... <laughs> 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 you know my memory, though, John. You did watch it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that... That's what? Alice McGowan. Bill. Is that yeah. Alice McGowan? <laughs> and call what that... was that big thing before? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hat. Oh, <laughs> you just trying to trick me with your big words. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a total wuss on this. this I know, thing, it does, yeah, and it's obviously a bit of a shame, because he is actually genuinely terrified of it, and the producer's gone, go on, get near it, go on, go on, poke him, and he just, and he won't have it. I mean, <laughs> what you should have done is when they said, do you want to go to Africa, he's gone, no. Nah. No, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Well, in this, in this show, it's not just Alistair. Yeah. It's not just him and rhinos. You also get to see him in the shower as well, mm. which is a bit of a treat. A bit of I a think. treat for the ladies. Yeah. So here we are, just about to film a piece in the hilltop shower. Uh, having just cleared it of a snake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sake. <laughs> snake. Oh, I thought I got over all my fears. The leak table was changing. And then suddenly we walk in and there's a snake. Not just lying, rearing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rearing. Yeah. It wasn't just lying there, rearing, ready to pounce on the person that took it out of the shower. <laughs> 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 Look at him there. Look, he won't go near the rhino. He's not afraid of standing under a giraffe, pissing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird type of television, this, isn't it? Because it seems to me like the bigger the celebrity you are, yeah. the more exotic the animal you get. Yeah. Like John Cleese, he got the ring-tailed lemurs of yeah. Madagascar. Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine them sending Peter Andre to Hertfordshire to look at some cows or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Whishaw uh, dances with ducks or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas you, yeah. Uh, you are, you know, you're mocking this. You actually do. This is this is your new stock in trade. This is isn't my it? new thing. I know. I've done various uh, animal programme. I did one about otters and uh, uh, otters. Uh, <laughs> 
You may, well, you may laugh, but yeah. the uh, <laughs> otters quite vicious. Um, and, and in fact, the bloke that took me around the otters, he was great because he was going, aye, now the otters, uh, they're beautiful creatures, aye, they're lovely. When they see them swim, they're beautiful. And off camera, he's going, they're vicious little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going, have you seen any otters here? And he goes, no. And he goes, but there's quite a lot of dogging goes on there, you know. <laughs> 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 he hadn't seen any otters. He hadn't he seen any there. otters. He's seen quite a lot of bums going up and down. Basically, <laughs> <cars. laughs> no, and um, I did this thing about. I went to India. Did the thing about bears, about dancing bears, and uh, we got in with the bears. And the bears are huge, they're massive. These bears, you know, they're huge, and, they're, and they and they've been subjected to a lifetime of human uh, abuse. And then, uh, yeah, you go in, Bill. They'll be fine. They'll be absolutely fine. And he kept this bloke kept saying things to me like he'd say, when you go close to him, he said, he said, always approach from the front. And I went, right. And then he went, oh no, never approach from the front. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, my English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, I always go, what? What? <laughs> Neil Morrissey's done one, though, hasn't he? He's done one with sharks. Yeah, oh, yeah, He's, yes. He did um, one with sharks. That's right. And uh, he, does, he does get close to some sharks, a lot closer than Alistair McGowan. Yes. Yeah. But probably not as close as Les Dennis would like him to. <laughs> he's right. He's a, no, he's not. <laughs> he's just coming. Oh, you don't, you're not a fan? No, I don't know. I've never met him. No, bear him no ill will. He just comes across being very smug. That's all. In the, you know, in the, just a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, he is, he is quite smug. But yeah. there's, there's a true. I mean, certain people are entitled to be smug. Yeah, fair very enough. smug, aren't they? Like Stevie Wonder. Yeah. He could be smug, couldn't he? You think you've got every right to be smug. True. You know, I, I'd, let, I'd let Stevie Wonder push me in a hedge. You know, I'd say, <laughs> yeah, if you just come up to me and push me in a hedge, I'd go. I don't, well, fair enough, you've written some great songs. Carry on. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah, if you're that good, I think you can get away with, with certain things. You can things. get away with things. David Byrne, Titan Talking Heads. He could do, he could do anything. Really? He could really knock, up, knock over all my cups. And <laughs> smash them, move them all around, and just then uh, flick the Vs. Right, and you just go... I go, well... Even go, cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Mate. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> I loved uh, The Great Curve, that track on, um, you know, Remain in Light. Fantastic. He just punched me in the face, and I just go, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and it would go on, and right. on. The abuse, the level of abuse. But he was actually behind you, his yeah. head, he was bearing down on you. <laughs> would you let him bugger you, Bill? <laughs> Where did you draw the line? This, this show has taken a rather nasty turn. <laughs> I thought it was just a nice little show about TV <laughs> clips. It turns into, <laughs> bugger or die! <laughs> How much, Bill? Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> yes. Million pounds, million pounds. David, come out. <laughs> Put Bill in the harness. <laughs> Save him. <laughs> you still haven't answered the question, I'm Bill. Not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering. I'm not answering that question. I never answer that question. Not even when other people. Everyone yeah. asks me that. No. <laughs> 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 Parkinson. <laughs> yeah. Now, come on. I'm saying the first... Like David Byrne buggy. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> that was better than McCown. That was it, yeah. yeah. I can do impressions. Can you? Who else can you do? I can do, um... What's his name? Uh, that DJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, the, the DJ, talk like that, you know. What's his name? Uh, well, if I knew who it was, I could help you. What's his name? Steve. Andy Kershaw. Yes! <laughs> Steve. <laughs> you can do impressions. You people you don't even know the name of. Oh, no. <laughs> this, ne this next record is from Haiti. <laughs> Come on, that was good. <laughs> no, don't patronise me. OK, we're going to move on now. Next up is something you absolutely love, which is nice to find out. It's a, yeah. it's a documentary from Australia. Yes. It's got almost sort of cult status, cane toads. It's oh, about, yeah. about the toads that have invaded Australia. Tell us why you love this. Yeah, it's a fantastic documentary from the, from the 80s. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just some wonderful bits, some wonderful characters. It's a great, it's a great it's documentary. Yeah. Have a look at this. Cane toads are coming. The cane toad is really a, an excellent invasion machine. It reproduces incredibly well. It can eat virtually anything. And it has got excellent predator defence because it is poisonous. There, you can see the venom shirt out there, didn't you? He poses as big a menace as the German army did in World War II. <laughs> Whenever you see a toad, have no hesitation running over and killing the monster. People hate them. It causes they huge do. level of, you know, 
vicious revenge. Well, it's generally yeah. considered you're advised if you see a toad, kill it. It's yeah. like, what, what's the opposite of an endangered, protected species? They are it. You know, you are encouraged to stamp on them, jump on them, squash them, kill them, yeah. mangle them. And we've, we've got a clip here of a bloke who's taken this to, to the full extreme. Any opportunity he, he's got, he will yeah. kill a cane toad. Yeah. I know I've made a clean kill, particularly if the toad is actually facing towards the vehicle because the air that's inside the toad is trapped within the head and blown out towards the back end and the toad really goes off with a bang like a balloon going off. <laughs> Well, I really go out of my way to run over cane toads, basically, because I have a very profound love of the wildlife that occurs here naturally. If it was possible to remove them and totally eradicate them from Australia, and I was capable of doing it, I, I would spend a lifetime doing exactly that. <laughs> Thing is... <laughs> what they don't say is he also hates horses. Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't, they don't. In Australia, if there's something on the road, it's, it's fair game. That's basically their mentality. Yeah. I was, uh, I was being driven along a, a road in the outback, and this bloke was driving a big, sort of big four by four, and uh, there was all these kangaroos on the road, and, and it's a really unfair trick that nature's played on them because the, the kangaroos like to lick the dew off the white lines, and uh, so they all lie and licking this dew in the middle of the road. All these cars barreling towards them like this. And most of them get up out of the way. And this one kangaroo just got up a bit late and sort of hopped one way and then he hopped the other way. And he was all over the place. And the bloke, and he didn't actually say it to me, it was just under his breath. And he just drove straight at the kangaroo, speeded up a bit, and he just went, You're in bloody trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is <what> it went. <laughs> it turned up the country and western music. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it was. Well, yeah. some people uh, interested in the toads. They found that some people neither hated them or loved them, right. but they they used them for recreational purposes. Oh. When uh, heroin and other drugs weren't freely available, the next best alternative was to go out and get a cane toad and kill it. Boil it down into a solution for 10 minutes, a little bit of water in, and drink the residue. So some of the South American Indians, they, um, when they get the, the, the mescaline out of the cactus, they say that and have it, that you actually start to see the world through the consciousness of the cactus. Um, <laughs> it tastes the same. Kate Moss. <laughs> That's, that's brilliantly inventive, isn't it? For a dope head. Yeah. Boiling down a toad. Yeah. I mean... And then drinking and the then residue. And then drinking the residue. Bloody hell. Yeah, Fair I mean, play, I say. I worry about overdosing on Gaviscon. And yeah. <laughs> have I had too much toad juice? I don't know. What's the right amount? Yeah. Does it say on the toad? Has it got a thing on the toad? <laughs> <laughs> you drink half a pint. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a bit of a treat for you now, Bill, because I know you love animals. We've actually got a cane toad for you. There oh, thanks so much. There we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, look, it is as well. It's a cane toad. Look. Is it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Don't drop it. Oh. Oh, thanks. The thing about them is they're poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! And, uh, <laughs> they shoot venom out of their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know. Are you, has he got it too tight? <laughs> I'll ask the toad. Has he got you too tight? Let go! <laughs> Well, I've got a kettle here as well. Right. So I thought what we could do, you could boil it up, drink it, and see what state you're in after the break. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after the break with Bill Bailey. <laughs> Welcome back to TV Heaven, Telly Hell. I'm here with Bill Bailey, who's flipping between <laughs> champagne and winkles over his life in front of the small screen. <laughs> So, the next choice is something, again, that you hate. OK, something yes. Something you hate. It's Last Night at the Proms. Yeah. And you're a musical man. I mean, yes. what, why, what, what's the problem with it? I can't bear the... just the toffery, the smugness, the general... <laughs> ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely time. The middle-class, <laughs> affected level of privilege that seems to imbue everyone's every pore. <laughs> and know and detest <laughs> everything that it stands for. <laughs> The end. The end. <laughs> well, we've got a clip. We've got a clip. And the, the audience generally are very well educated. Yes. Terrible, very, very self conscious. Oh, know? yeah. And, and this is a clip of them trying to sort of really let rip. Yeah.
Once a year, they live for that moment, don't yeah. they? <laughs> they do, that's once a year they go mad. Yeah. They do. I don't it's... know what, what they're drinking, but it's not strong enough. No. no. <laughs> Let's go mental, Toby. Right, Al. Bunty Frobisher. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing an amusing tie. <laughs> That's the equivalent of a mosh pit, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, I think they call it the gosh pit. Oh, is yeah, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gosh, it's lovely down there. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that like it passed its sell by date a bit. And all, what I think the thing is that I, I don't like about it is the fact that the kind of middle class, kind of um, upper middle class kind of uh, level of privilege has hijacked the whole notion of cla classical music. Do you think it puts people off? It going? puts people off, yeah. Yes, they see that and they go, oh, God, it's going. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not for me. <laughs> Whereas that, it, may, it may well be. But I think it's the last night the proms yeah, is where I they have all these traditions and they have all the, these True. sort of little in jokes. Yeah. And there's, there's one, we've, we've got a clever one here. Was, is, if there's a particularly sentimental piece, they, they pass handkerchiefs yeah. amongst the crowd. Horrible, isn't it? Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> yeah. That would really wind me up if I was a musician. That, oh. you know, that, yeah. It's just taking the piss, isn't it? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Because it is, it, is, it is the sort of domain of the upper middle classes, but occasionally in the, in the crowd you get infiltrators in there. And I All think right. in, the, in this clip we see someone who looks like a, a motorhead roadie. All right. Terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think, yes, I've seen him in one of my gigs, I think. I love you. <laughs> he sort of, he represents your fan base. Yeah. You don't really get groupies so much as... No. Engineering students. Engineering yeah. students. <laughs> so after a gig, you go, you go out, there are blokes like him standing there. Yeah, standing there going... Can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I touch your effects pedal? Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, uh, We've I'd got won. names for it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a band where we had um, a synthesizer called a Wasp, and uh, you played it. There was no keys to it at all, and it rather like the Wasp. It was just really annoying. That's all it was. <laughs> it was just black and yellow, and you could blow it. And it went <laughs> like that. And we had a bloke in there who wanted to be in our band called Wivs, and uh, we said you can't be in the band Wivs. Uh, Can I just ask why was he called Wivs? Wivs. I don't, I don't know. Oh, just always um, interested about nicknames. You know. No, so. Wivs. I don't know, actually. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think his full name was Wivers. Why did you call him Wivs? It was an acronym. We ingest violent... I don't know. What? <laughs> salmon. It's salmon. Salmon. F violent salmon. And, uh, we'll he... cut, don't worry, we'll cut this bit. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, doing the middle of, we're in the middle of a song, and I heard this noise. And it was Wivs, and he was prostrate on the floor, on his stomach, blowing into this wasp. <laughs> like that. And that's how he, that he got in the band. And he looked up, gave me the thumbs up, like that. Right. Kicked him in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never seen him, I've never seen him before or since. He's like the sax player in Baker Street. What, you've never seen him again? No, I know why. No, I've never met him, but... <laughs> no, the... Uh, the what, what are you talking about? No, no, the sax player on, um, uh, the, the, <laughs> that thing. The one with... <laughs> Stop chatting to your nan. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taken. Start <laughs> on the Baker Street. Oh God, blimey, you you hot? Oh, I'm very hot. I'm hot. <laughs> oh, oh, toad. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Oh, toffees. Who got me them? <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about Baker Street? It's not Baker Street. No, the other one. <laughs> it was. Um, it was. Um, <laughs> God. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> Lou Reed. You make Ozzy Osbourne look like Paxman. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Reed. Uh, that one. <laughs> do, 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 do. And the coloured <laughs> girls go, do, 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 do. <laughs> you know. Yeah, walk on the wild That's side. Walk yes. on the wild side. And there's a lovely solo in that. <laughs> a saxophone solo where they go, do, 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 do. And the, and the, theory, and the myth was yes. that some bloke just wandered in off the street and just played it like that. Nobody knew who he was. Right. And then he finished it and he went like that and he just walked on. <laughs> and nobody saw him again. Right. <laughs> and he's it, called Wivs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the story.
<laughs> well, it will be one day. One day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got final clip we've got yeah. in this section. The last clip we've got is, is something you asked for. And it's uh, it's most shameful moment in rock. It's Brian May on top of Buckingham Palace at the Jubilee. Okay. It's graceful, isn't it? Uh, it's it, it's just. Like rock and roll never happened, is it? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's he's not even got up there, you know, against the Queen's wishes or something, you know. No, <laughs> like, scrambled up there, you know, as a maverick. It's about, rock and roll is about like rebellion and uh, yeah, no. you know, groupies, tosses, oh, way, brilliant, cocaine, yeah. midget, oh, big pineapple made out of cocaine. <laughs> Fourteen <laughs> leopards came in, and one of them was a lesbian, jumped up, way, ah. Like that, yeah. drugs in the eyes, cane toad, bang, 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 <laughs> punching a cane toad with the giant bladder of a medieval you know, uh, juggler. And uh, <laughs> not, uh, you imagine, would mind if I play on, you know, yes? Of course. Yeah, yeah if, there was, if, if it, when he was playing, there was loads of security guards and SWAT teams yeah. trying to get him off, you know, and he just got up there and went, uh, he's actually going, mm. Well done, Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your favourite tune. Yeah. Oh, my gee, he's pretty sick of it by now. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, not this old shit again. She plays this. Ah, let her. Oh, I'll play something out, anything. I don't mind. Yeah. Probably, he probably, the worst thing he did, he probably knocked her sky dish over. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, that, because that was that whole event. It was in the gardens of Buckingham Palace. It was yeah. like a festival in, in, a, in, a, in the back grounds of a palace. Yeah. Apparently, she made a fortune selling cans. <laughs> Yeah, three rooms of banging privilege. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Bill, for that glimpse into your TV heaven telly hell. And on this show, we like to see ourselves as the sealed knot of television. We can reenact any moment in television history. Is there anything you'd like to do? Oh, yes. Oh, don't, don't tell us. Huh? It's a secret. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Bailey!